Greetings. I am about to show you how to make a piezo contact microphone. This is a device that you can use to create your own handmade instruments with. First, you'll need to clean up your work area. Uh, it's a good idea to have some uh, green tea while you're working. Next, you'll need to select a uh, quarter inch jack if you want to plug it into a standard mixing board. Uh, here's some. These are also from All Electronics. I'll make sure you have the email, uh, the URL for that one. This is what it looks like. And this is how you take it apart. You unscrew it. You'll see it has a, uh, uh, this is a positive thing in the center. This is a negative thingy on the outside. This is a plastic shield that goes over it. And a little uh, spring thing which connect, uh, this protects your cable. Next, I'm going to find some wire and cut it to length, but I'll need tools to do that. These are both wire snippers and strippers. Uh, the uh, strippers, yeah. This is, uh, this one goes down to 30 gauge, uh, 28, 26. Uh, and this one goes down to 18 gauge, 16, 14. The bigger the gauge, the smaller the wire. See, I have my tool. Here is some uh, wire that I have on a spool, and it is uh, shielded uh, alarm cable. Shielded is good because it protects your wire from getting hums from various electromagnetic sources. I'm going to get a lot of it because I want to make a long cord for my contact microphone. All right, that looks pretty good. Snip. Snip. First step is to unscrew your quarter inch jack and slide the little spring thing and the little casing thing onto the cord. If you forget that, you'll have to do it later. Well, we're going to get into some soldering now. So here's my little solder setup. Notice I have warning label on it because I have been using lead on this, but now I have lead-free solder, much safer. Uh, this is a thing to, little clippy thing that I use, not 100% uh, necessary. And this is rosin soldering flux. You can get these things at the hardware store. Uh, now what I'm going to do is slide the uh, little plastic thing over the wire. Next, uh, I'm going to figure out where I'm going, where to strip the wire. I want the red one to go here and the black one to go down here. So, and I want to be able to uh, squish this so that it holds the insulated part of the wire in place. So what I'm going to do is put it to about the length I want, mark it here, uh, and then strip it. Uh, I'm using my bigger wire strippers. Let's try 12 gauge and see if that works. It's easy to clip through all the wires at this point. You don't want to do that. This That worked. It was a, uh, Okay, so now what I've got is a red wire and a black wire and some shielding. I'm going to rip off the shielding. Discard it. Handy discard uh, container. There's a little piece of string here. I'm going to get some scissors, clip that off. I don't want it. Uh, next, 
I'm going to clip the black wire and the uninsulated wire to the same length. They are going to get uh, uh, actually soldered together and they are going to be connected there to that little hole. So, what length to clip them at? Short one. There we go. Clip. All right. Now we're going to get into some finer stripping. Uh, I like 26 gauge for these little wires. Let's see if that works. See, I have a little mark on there that shows me what it is. Uh, what is that, like a uh, quarter inch or something of stripping? Oh, it worked. Look, I have a little bit of copper showing. Now I want to do the same thing with the black wire, which is the negative. The red wire is positive. On the number 26 with a little dot on it, Okay, I'm going to now stick the uh, negative wire, the black one, uh, and the shielding wire, which had uh, no insulation on it, through this little hole and fold it back. And once that's in place, then I'm going to use the end of my um, snipper tool to crimp the, uh, the metal at the bottom of this thing, and that holds it in place, and it's touching the insulation, so you're not going to leak any electricity. All right, uh, now I'm going to use my little grippy thing to clamp it there. Get out my solder, my flux, uh, and an applicator stick for the flux, and introducing soldering iron. Already plugged in, finger on the trigger, I can feel it buzzing, I can smell it getting hot. Okay, I'm going to get a little flux on the end of my applicator stick here and put it on top of where I want the solder joint to be. The flux makes the solder go where you want it to go. And it smells like pine, so it's nice. It's very sticky. Okay, next I'm going to uh, use my soldering iron, pull the trigger, get my solder in place, close by. You'll also need a sponge. I'm going to put a little water on my sponge here. Adding water to a sponge makes it spongy. This sponge is from Trader Joe's. Here's my soldering iron. Here's my sponge. I'm going to clean off the soldering iron. I do this before and after I make any solder joint. All right, we have flux on the joint. Soldering iron is clean. Pulling the trigger, I can feel it humming in my hand. And I can smell it getting hot, and oh, look, see the solder melted right on the tip, just like we like it to. Okay, and now I'm going to take that liquid solder, put it right on top of the joint, hold it there for a second, try not to breathe the fumes. Ah, uh, that's perfect. Amazing. Cleaning off the soldering iron after the first joint. Next. I'm going to get the, uh, the positive wire into this little hole. Not always an easy task. I like to use tweezers sometimes for this. Right through it. Wow. I'm bending it back with my finger, squeezing with my tweezers. 
clipping it back into place so I can work on it easily. Flux. To make the solder go where you want it to go. Tweezers again to make the wire go where you want it to go. Cleaning off the tip of the soldering iron again, squeezing the trigger. Seeing it get hot, smelling it get hot. It kind of vibrates. There we go, melting the the lead-free solder and putting it on place there. That was more than I needed. All right, a little better, not the perfect joint. And cleaning off the soldering iron after it's been used. Unclipping it. Uh, then we uh, slide the little... Uh, see, these things are already on the wire, right? That's kind of, That's cool. Here's the little plastic thing that helps protect it. Here's the metal shielding. And we can uh, plug it in there. Here we are at the back of my mixing board. And here's the um, quarter inch jack I just soldered. I'm going to plug it in um, because I like to hear the sounds of contact microphones as they are being produced. You may not want to do this. All right, here's the other end of the wire. Uh, I'm going to clip it onto my work desk. Um, because sometimes the wire will fall off and uh, it makes it difficult to work with. Okay, I'm going to introduce a couple more materials. This is uh, electrical tape you can get at the hardware store. This is uh, copper with adhesive on the other side. Uh, it's used to keep slugs out of your garden. You can also get it at the hardware store. Next, you'll need to find your piezo. I keep mine in a plastic bag here. I order them from All Electronics. They cost less than a dollar a piece. You can get them with little wires stuck on them, like this one. Or without. I prefer the ones without. Let me select a good one. There we go. Nice and shiny. Perfect. Working with the inexpensive piezo disc. Uh, I'm going to clip it into the uh, holder for it, adjust it so I can work on it easily. Okay. Um, the wire, uh, this is the other end of that same wire sort of. Um, so we want it to be about this long because we want the um, red positive wire to be in the center and we want the black negative wire and that uninsulated grounding wire to be on the periphery. So I'm going to mark it right where my finger is. Those are marking sounds. And I'm going to get my big wire stripper. Uh, I think we're going up to, I think, what is this, 10 gauge I'm going to use for this one. And you kind of clip it around here. Then you should be able to pull it off. And hopefully you haven't cut through any wires. Discard the little ends. Oh, see, it's plugged in, right? Hear that? That's that red positive wire going through the amplifier. Pull back the, uh, the shielding and snip it off with the scissors. Discard it. Okay, now I'm getting my finer wire stripping tool. And I'm going to strip, I'm 
going back to the where the little dot by the 26 gauge you have to, you might have to figure out your own gauge and stripping like quarter inch of it to just get a little bit of copper I want it to sit right there on top of that uh, piezo all right next I'm gonna clip the other stuff back just like I did with the uh, quarter inch jack all right I clipped the other two wires and uh, time to strip this uh, black negative wire 26 gauge little dot on the stripper and pull it out there it is discard the insulation and take uh, the recently stripped wire and that uh, wire that never had any insulation and wind it together there okay okay next oh, okay i'm going to position this thing right there All right, now it's touching. I'm doing the negative one first. Put a little bit of rosin on it where I want the solder to flow. Clean the tip of my soldering gun. Pull the trigger. Enjoy that humming sound. Waiting for it to get hot. I can smell it now. Okay, there we go. A little bit of lead-free solder on it and touching it where I want the solder to go. If it goes well, you don't have to mess with it very much. Okay, cleaning the tip again. And now it's time to position the, uh, the other one. All right. Ready to solder it in the center, and we'll have the full contact microphone effect cleaning off the tip of the soldering iron. Applying a small amount of flux. To make the solder go where I want it to go. Feeling that warm throbbing of the soldering iron in my hand. Mmm. Okay, it's getting warm. A little bit of solder on there. Let's hope it goes where I want it to go. Oh yeah. There we go. Yeah, I give that one a B for uh, not being totally beautiful. Now, I have in my possession a piezo contact microphone. that will pick up the slightest vibration. Hear that hum? Mm. We don't want that. So that's why we continue on with the next step. All right, clip that thing in place. Next step is uh, applying copper all around it. This shields the contact microphone, just like the inside of this wire is shielded. Okay. Important next step. Before I apply copper to this contact microphone, I have to insulate the center part where the red wire touches. That white circle in the center has to be insulated from the copper. Otherwise, you'll get a short circuit and it won't sound very good. So, I've got electrical tape. I'm gonna clip it to the right length. I'm going to uh, cut it, like, kind of to match the circle of the contact microphone, half of it. Put it in place. OK. 
Okay, same thing with the bottom half. It's nice to have good sharp Chinese scissors. Oh, what was that? I guess it's okay. All right, uh, the center part's well insulated now. Next step is to cut the uh, copper. We want it to cover front and back. Uh, so I'm just gonna, I cut it to the length that so it can do front and back. You'll need two of these because for this size piezo. You want it to be nice and flat on this side. It's good if the uh, copper actually touches the, uh, uh, the shielding, because then you've got a layer of shielding that goes through the whole system. Use my sharp Chinese scissors and trim. You don't need that excess stuff for anything. This is uh, gaff tape, or a little bit of this. This stuff is great, this gaff tape. It's expensive, but you'll find lots of uses for it. So again, I'm just putting it around the base, just to stabilize that part a bit. Feels pretty good. Notice, no hum. That's what we want, no hum. So at this point, we have a fully functional piezo contact microphone. take it a step further I want to use a product called Plasti Dip, kind of toxic uh, but what it will do is weatherproof it so if I decide to use this outside for example on a wind harp on the roof uh, it'll work just fine. Time for a little more green tea. All right we're outside in California. Uh, I have a clamp and I have our contact mic that we just made and I'm going to clamp it right on there like that. Here's the plastic oh, no. dip. You have to shake it for a long time. Still shaking it. Um, once it's properly shook, uh, I'm going to try to get an even coat on that side and on that side. And I'm going to let it dry for a while. Come back and do a second and third coat later on. All right, time for the second coat. Ten minutes later, shaking up the stuff again. Uh, 
third coat, 10 minutes later, maybe 15, shaking it up a lot again, and At this point, after it dries, you have a fully functional, weatherproofed piezo contact microphone that you can use for making all sorts of delightful instruments with. Look at this, just a simple piece of steel. Whoa. Let's put it down. The end.